All right, guys, this is Andre back with the Wings Mobile Detailing Podcast. Today, I finally had a chance to interview and talk to, uh, share some ideas and learn from him, Jordan Stupar. His owner, he has, he has a, his own personal brand, owner of uh, Jordan Stupar Academy for sales training. And he's done business with multi-million dollar companies uh, where he he helps in the sales training process as well. And I've been following him since the beginning when he started his uh, his sales career and I've on, on Instagram, Graham, and glad to have you over, uh, Jordan Stupar. Glad to be on here, man. Thanks for uh, allowing me to jump on here and say hi to your audience. Awesome, man. I follow you starting your company, the Jordan Stupar Academy, where you first started. Were you in Florida first that you when you started? Yep, I um, I started my entrepreneurial career down in Miami, Florida. Okay, and that, that's when I started like to follow you uh, back then at that time. And I, I wanted to just like share ideas and see what you have to uh, share with the audience as well. And as far as the sales training, what is that that you actually do just to clarify like in people's mind? Yeah, so, you know, my main intention uh, with the business that I run right now is to uh, help improve and implement successful sales practices, uh, either with individual salespeople or of course with uh, small, medium or large size businesses that are looking to increase uh, sales, uh, retention, reduce churn, so on and so forth. Um, you know, I've been involved now and, and started three businesses in the last three years, uh, scaled one, sold uh, my SaaS company earlier this year so that I could focus uh, almost uh, completely on uh, the sales uh, development programs and the, the things that I like to do with other uh, organizations. So that's really my main focus right now. And of course I do things uh, in person, virtually like we're doing right now. And of course um, I have a, a library of uh, exclusive content um, called Stupar Sales Academy. Awesome, man. Definitely want to get to that more, Jordan. Uh, but what I'm most, more in a selfish way, man, what I'm most interested in like learning more about is when you first started, uh, because a lot of people they see, I'm sure they see you on Instagram, and you're big on Instagram, and they, in their in, the, in their mind, it may it may seem like it was quick. It was like the the day, uh, night to day type of success, and I know how that's not how it works. I know that it's through grind, step by step, and I s started following you when you had your first office, I believe, with your team, and now it seems like you have a bigger office, so it's always exciting to see the growth there. Um, but from the very beginning, how did you, where did you start? And if you can share some pitfalls or successful uh, days that you had that you can remember. Early on in my sales career? Early on, yes. Yikes. Um, I mean, my, my sales career goes all the way back to 2003, technically, when I was still in high school. You know, during the summers, you know, I was always looking for stuff to do outside of just, you know, doing nothing. And uh, ended up uh, selling some vacuum cleaners, some cutlery, so on and so forth. But um, I would say that, you know, my full-time position as a salesperson really started um, right in college. You know, during summer break of freshman year, um, I was uh, recruit. Well, first I was fired from Chili's because I was working serving tables and you know making a couple of bucks that way. But I got fired because I d didn't show up to work like four days in a row, just no call, no show. And, you know, obviously mm -hmm. there's only so many times you can do that before they give you the ax. So they fired me. I ended up on Craigslist and got a, a job selling alarm systems residentially uh, door to door. And, um, you know, right off the bat, you know, that was the first slap in the face, you know, just, um, you know, entering a sales career, going door to door, getting door slammed in your face, people giving you objections, not interested, already have one. We don't care about it. Go away. You know, and, um, you know, it took me about two weeks, two straight weeks of just, you know, really busting my ass, you know, trying to do as much as I could and, and literally making no sales, zero sales. I'm watching guys around me getting one sale, two sale, three sales every single day. And I'm the guy that's like working, I'm putting in the work, but I'm not getting it, getting anything um, out of what I'm doing. And so um, that was pitfall number one, you know, and, and it, it, if it wasn't for my mom, you know, I probably would have just like given up. You know, I, I remember literally being on a street corner smoking a cigarette because that was the thing I like to do to avoid knocking doors. You know, I'll just mm -hmm. stand here on the corner, smoke a cigarette and contemplate my life. And uh, I called my mom and I'm like, you know what, just come pick me up. 
you know, I'm on the corner of, you know, fourth and whatever, you know, just I'm done, you know, like I'm thrown in the towel and she said, I'm not getting in my car. I'm not coming to pick you up and I will consider it, but you have to knock on one more door. And then she hung up on me, which is the most unlike my mother type of thing uh, yeah. that she would ever do. But, but I think that she knew what was going to happen next. I hadn't learned it yet, what persistence actually was. And this was a very good lesson for me because, you know, literally the next door that I knocked, I didn't even have to knock on it. I saw a guy in the street working on his truck. He saw me and he's like, yo, man, come on, come on down here. You know, what are you, what are you selling? And I was like, you know, I'm not really selling anything. I'm giving away some alarm systems. That was more or less the pitch. And uh, he ended up, you know, saying, dude, sign me up, you know, and he, he walked me into his house. I ended up getting a deal. And it was, uh, it was that moment that, you know, I had that big breakthrough of, you know, no sales, no sales, no sales, no sales, beating myself up, feeling absolutely terrible, you know, cursing my life out, wondering why I'm not getting success or, you know, whatever to all of a sudden, boom, getting that deal. Yeah. And, and, and that was, you know, the heroin for me. Once I got that little dose of what that felt like, I've been addict to, addic addicted to it ever since. Yeah, I th I th you, you know this more than I do, but it's funny because uh, I do as an uh, auto detailing company, you know, I, sometimes I sell my services to dealerships and I want to acquire their accounts. And a lot of times I just have to go in cold and drive my car in the, in the street and you know, I just stop by a dealership. And there's always, I, I tell my guys, you always expect 10 no's not to expect, you don't want to get the 10 no's, you want to get 10 yeses, but be ready for the 10 no's before you get the yes. But every time I would personally drive to a dealership, the, the one dealership that I would see the, that I would think for some reason, uh, I'm, I'm going to go pass through this one. And it happened many times where that one dealership that I wanted to pass through and I decided to actually go in, that's the one that sold, uh, closed the deal. Yep. Has this ever, that's probably like how it happened to you. The one that when you were going to stop, you were right there to stopping it. And then it was right. That was the moment that you had actually to have to go, that you had to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that was it right there is, you know, you just, that was the, the very first like big sales and life lesson is, you know, you just yeah. got to keep on knocking. Yeah. And, and, and ever, and ever, that's where you grew, uh, you grew from. How old were you back then? Man, uh, about about eighteen, I think. Whenever, whenever you kind of whatever age you are, or when you kind of graduate high school into college, that was that was right there. Gotcha. Okay, it was right after, yeah, around two thousand two thousand eighteen. You would say. Uh, two thousand and six, two thousand and seven. Because I graduated high school and okay, yeah, yeah, graduated high school in oh five. Had done a little bit of sales there, and but like yeah, as soon as I jumped into door to door, that's when I, I would say like my real career as a salesperson started. Cause then I, I dropped out of school and just did sales full time. Gotcha, man. Okay. And where, when you actually decided to be an entrepreneur, were you, and what was the reason? Were you actually rebellious with having a jobs or it wasn't that reason you just went into? Oh, I mean, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, you know, and, and dropping my sales career, um, you know, that happened, you know, 2017. And that was, that was to, to scratch an itch I've always really had. Um, I've always been entrepreneurial. I've always been a self-starter. I've always been motivated to create things, sell them, try to make a living doing that. But I never really uh, understood or knew, you know, what it was that I actually wanted to create, what I wanted to actually do. So, you know, um, when I kind of figured that out, you know, it was just a no brainer for me to, you know, to, to become an entrepreneur, create a product and, and, and see if I could make a living doing it. And, um, you know, that's what I've been doing now for the last three and a half years. I've been unemployed, uh, for near, nearly four years now. And, uh, you know, I'm super grateful for my entrepreneurial journey. It's not been easy. It's probably been one of the hardest, uh, journeys that I've spoken to anybody about comparing kind of like the journey and everything, but, you know, I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. And, uh, you know, it's just given me a lot of inspiration to keep on going. Awesome, man. And it's, it's, so you get really, I'm sure you get really excited and uh, motivated with your, where you are now, just growing the company and yeah, and going yeah. and stuff after the other. Yeah, this is my, uh, my, my third company that I'm growing now. Um, I've had uh, success with the first one. I had uh, success with the second one. 
and um, you know I'm experiencing a lot of uh, pretty quick success here, and I'm in my my fifth month now of uh, Stu Power Enterprises, and you know we're we're, we're trajecting extremely well, uh, way faster than I I thought I actually would. Awesome, man. Have you created like a sales team there in, in the company? Yeah, mind? so I'm actually hiring on my first couple of salespeople now next week, uh, right before Christmas, I'm getting them uh, set up. I've just been, um, you know, with, with the experience I've got now over the last couple of years, I've, I've learned, you know, that processes, um, you know, uh, policies, procedures, and, and really just setting the business up before getting all the sales and getting other people, you know, involved in the, in the business, it's super important to make sure that you have all the things that you need so that when other people are wondering what to do, or what process to follow, or what's the procedure on this, and how do you onboard that? And by the way, when I get a contract, where do I send it to? You have to document all of these things so that as you onboard employees and people to work for you, that they actually know what to do when things actually happen. Because you know everybody can pick up the phone, make a cold call, or whatever. You know what happens when it's successful, and I actually schedule an appointment. Do I have yeah. a calendar link? Do I know how to do this? Do I have access to email? so on and so forth. How do I use the CRM? Blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of, a lot of little things that make up a business and there is no such thing as a successful business that, that ha doesn't have, you know, processes, systems. procedures, policies, and mm -hmm. systems built out for the people that actually work it. So I've taken a much slower approach to building a team this time around because I want to have all of those things in place, have as much of it automated as possible and documented so that when I bring somebody on, the onboarding and the time that it takes for them to effectively do their job is reduced as far as possible. Going back a little bit before and where I wanted to get kind of more of your story there, which I'm getting from the beginning. Um, later, I, that's how I met you. That's how I saw you the first time when I was watching uh, Green Cardone's uh, sh The Whatever It Takes show that you're... Um, yep. that you're hired there by him. And that was, that was really awesome. Like I saw you, the commitment there. I even saw during, during the, I think the last episode that you asked for his number. And I was like, oh, that's, that's sweet. Um, but as you're telling me, you're already in sales before. So you're already um, into that. So it wasn't that you started from there. So you started career way before. Yeah. So, I, I'd say I probably had anywhere between like 12, 13 years of experience in sales as, as a top producer before I even went there. So yeah, no, I, I knew what I was doing. Um, it was just a new product and new business like, like anything else. So, yeah. you know, just copy and paste the skills that you've accumulated and use them. You know, I think, um, you know, the, the number one question I get asked from people, you know, about the, the three and a half years that I worked for Grant is, you know, what was the biggest takeaway? What did you learn? You know, and the number one takeaway uh, wasn't anything else other than discipline. You know, one of the biggest problems that I had in my life as a salesperson, though I had experienced some measures of success and had done some pretty well, it was always inconsistent because my work ethic was inconsistent. So I'd have a good week, bad week, good, good week, bad week, good, you know, the roller coaster. And, you know, the thing that I, I really took away there, you know, due to the culture that Grant put into place there is, you show up every day, you know, no matter what, and you put in the work and you work hard. And while you're there, you utilize your time well. And, you know, being thrown into that type of environment was exactly the last real missing piece of what I needed to have in order to set myself up for success. And so, you know, I also, I also had a, a, a bit of a moment right before um, Grant's office. And the second most popular question I get about working for Grant is, you know, had you, um, had you worked, if you would have done anything else other than work there, do you think that you would have experienced the amount of financial and professional success as you did at Grant's office? And, you know, the, the real answer that I have for, for everybody, and this is the realest thing I can say about it, is I would have made just as much money, if not more, doing anything else that I would have done um, had I not worked there, or won that reality show or whatever. Um, I had, you know, I had a moment with myself in 2013, you know, that dude, I hated my life. I hated where I was at. And I had a, a true, you know, epiphany where I just looked out the window one day in New York City and just questioned my whole life. I was like, what am I doing here? You know, I had no family, no friends. Was I, I was the top salesperson at a Fortune 500 company on the phones, crushing it. But I had limited commissions, limited income. 
just a horrible, you know, experience. I could talk about that for three hours straight if I wanted to give you the full story, but I won't bore you to death. And, you know, it was at that moment that literally, dude, my whole life changed. You know, nothing really changed. It's not like a Porsche just showed up on the street instead of my Nissan Maxima. And, you know, obviously that's just, it started right there where I made a decision and a commitment to change everything in my life. And then slowly everything changed. Gotcha. Yeah, I see you're a big car guy as well. I just, uh, <laughs> I like cars. Yeah, I've I've seen that. It's a nice Porsche, by the way. Really nice. Thank you. Uh, so when you were there at the before you went to to Florida, then you were in New York. You said. You were yep, I was. For li- yep, I was living in New York City. Uh, I was living in Queens in 2013, and then late 2013, I think on Halloween, um, is when I uh, started uh, moving down to Miami. Got it. And, but you still consider that, that uh, as you said, you going to Miami, them, you moving out of your place, was it, did you went across your comfort zone or did you, or if moving, it was normal for you? Because for some people say, all right, move out and get out of your comfort zone. But for some people, moving isn't a comfort zone in a way. Yeah, no, I, for, I mean, at that point, no, it wasn't, you know, I left, uh, I left Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where I'm born and raised where I live now, but I left Milwaukee, uh, I think when I was 20, maybe 21, I moved straight to Hampton, Virginia, not too far away from where you're at right now. Yeah. Um, spent, uh, probably nine, 10 months there, then drove, uh, drove to Dallas, Texas, lived there for three and a half years. Uh, Then drove all the way up to New Jersey, spent two months there, then moved to New York City, spent 11 months there, then drove all the way down to Miami, spent five years in Miami, and then uh, right back up to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, you know, where I've been now for the last two-ish years. Okay. And and, and after... You, so after after Florida, you went. That's when you went to Wisconsin. There was not not another one in the way. Right. You, yep. You moved quite a bit. <laughs> I, I, I know how that is. Yeah, I left Wisconsin for about a decade and uh, lived in several different cities. And you know, just I've been the type of person that nothing ma- nothing's mattered to me as much as the opportunities in front of me. And if I can't find an opportunity where I'm at, or I don't like the opportunities where I'm at. Um, you know, I move and, um, you know, that, that, that's the way I've always operated. And, you know, it's not always been successful, you know, until you get successful. It's like, move. it's like the, the door to door story, you know, you just keep on moving, you keep on doing what you need to do. And sooner or later you'll experience the success and, you know, the things that you actually want out of it. Mm -hmm. And, and with, with that, you became, you said you became a little more consistent, right? Cause I know there's a lot of, young entrepreneur, young entrepreneurs who they think that they have to, when they, when they hear people, like they hear influential people like you saying, Oh, I, I moved a lot of places. They think that that's what they got to do. But right. at one point you got consistent and you're like, okay, it's, it's up to me. It's not up to me moving and doing a hundred things at once. You stay, now you stay in your sales academy. You're going full on it. Do you agree with me? Do you agree that it wouldn't be uh, to reach success, you don't necessarily have to really ch- keep changing a lot of things. Is that what you learned? I think I think that's a, a high level question. I think that there's several different answers in which I could disagree, but I would agree topically on that on that statement that you know you don't have to change all the time to to experience success. Oftentimes, some of the things that you might want to consider doing is not changing anything and just being super consistent in your approach to what you're doing. But at the exact same time, you know, for, for your listeners out there, don't, don't get that confused with, Hey, I don't really need to change uh, much in my approach to doing what I'm doing. I can, let me, I'll put it this way. If you're, if you're, if you're right now uh, working at McDonald's at the fry machine and you just continue working at the fry machine, you never make any changes in your life. You're not in pursuit of doing anything sooner or later, nothing's going to happen. You're going to be working at that fry machine for the rest of your life because you're not actually changing your approach in the application in which you're exerting your energy and your effort to get a new result. So if you're just sitting at the fry machine, you know, you're not picking up any new skills. You know, you're not helping anybody to drive through. You're not swiping credit cards. You're not going to become a manager, the general manager. You're not going to climb up and, you know, so specifically, yes, you're going to make changes every single day, but 
topically, you know, you're going to want to put that same amount of energy and effort into the right opportunity. The problem is, is that most people don't, um, don't want to take enough risk to change the opportunity or the vehicle in which they're actually in. You know, I knocked doors for eight years, you know, in different cities that I lived in. And, you know, that was cool, but I was never really changing who I was. Yeah, I was growing up a little bit, getting a little bit more mature here and there through my 20s like anybody else would, but I wasn't really changing my work ethic. I wasn't really changing who I was. And it wasn't until New York City where I realized, dude, I'm, gonna, I'm basically going to kill myself off. You know, the Jordan Stupar that's, you know, been up to this point, he's, he's no longer alive. I have to reinvent Jordan Stupar and become a completely different person so that I can have completely different things in my life. And so that's where, you know, sometimes you have to change everything to change everything. I was curious, going back a little bit there at uh, when you were at Grant Cardone's office, um, what was the, did you have any, any thing when you're getting into it that you expected, oh, I thought this was going to be this way, but it was a different way when you went there? Or did you, you already were mature enough to kind of know where you're getting into was part of the plan of your life to go there? Uh, I had, um, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I had no, I had no idea what Grant even did. Um, literally, <laughs> literally was sitting at my dead end job in New York city. This was after I decided to change everything in my life. And so I just started looking for opportunities. And so I was on Twitter and I, you know, I'd follow Grant because I'd been in sales a long time. I knew he was a sales guy. I'd never read any of his books, never been to one of his seminars. Didn't know anything about this guy. I just figured, you know, dude, he's got more followers than I do and more money. So, <laughs> you know, and I, I saw a tweet from, from, from him come through and that was, um, you know, I, I, was, I was sitting at my desk and uh, I saw that tweet come through. I think it said something along the lines of, you know, send in a, a video on why we should have you on our reality TV show to get your dream job. And I was like, dream job, like it's better than this one. So, you know, I went home, recorded that video, sent it down, you know, a day or two later, like the producers got in touch with me. They're like, Hey, you know, come on down. We'd love to have you on. Only caveat is you're buying your whole flight, your hotel, the whole experience. We're not putting up any money for this whatsoever. Um, and this is going to be, you know, about a four day thing here in Miami. And then when you're done, Either you get the job and you'll figure that out with the company or, you know, you get sent back uh, to, you know, wherever you, you came from. So I didn't have enough money for a round trip flight from, you know, New York to Miami, but I had just, an, I'm talking like literally just enough points on my Southwest account to grab a round trip. And I didn't have enough money for an actual hotel on South Beach because God knows if you're, you know, know what Miami is, it's very expensive and I had no money. So I stayed in a hostel and if you've never stayed in a hostel, don't do it. Um, it, <laughs> it it's an insane uh, situation right there on South Beach, you know, staying in a hostel with like eight other people in bunk beds, like they're all partying. I'm here for a business interview and, um, you know, ended up winning that show. Everybody knows that um, I dominated that show, just crushed it. And, um, you know, ended up getting that job and like, you know, I got hired on and, you know, I put in my two weeks at in New York city and drove down and like on day one, like I was like, so am I selling like books? Like, like what am I, I had no idea. And so, you know, uh -huh. I, I just went down there with the idea that dude, I'm going to make this work. It has to work because I've made this commitment to myself now to change my entire life. And this is the vehicle I've, I've ended up in. So, you know, let's make this work. And so that's kind of the, you know, the short story of how that thing got started. I admire that, man. That's all because you go into something that you, you didn't get yourself stuck into the details. You just went for it. And yeah, it, <laughs> pe people that are detail oriented and that are you know overthinking about a salary, benefits, vacation time. Yeah. What city is it in? Are people gonna like me? Am I gonna like them? Am I gonna really? Maybe I'll just sit back here and do what I'm already doing. Nothing could piss me off more than people that are having those thoughts and don't do anything about it. Because, you know, again, like I mentioned, I went down to Grant's office, had no idea who he was, had no idea what he sold, had no idea how I was going to make money, what my comp plan was, my salary, if I was going to get that, literally nothing. The only thing that I made is I made one decision and one commitment to say, I'm going to change my entire life. And if this is the vehicle or the opportunity in which, you know, I can do that, 
then, then voila, I'm going to sacrifice everything I've got going on. I'm going to head down south, go to Miami, and I'm going to absolutely crush this opportunity. And that is specifically what I did, you know, and for the people out there listening or watching this, like details don't matter. You know, the only thing that matters is, is what you do with the details. The details don't do anything themselves. So it doesn't matter about the details. Just go for it and make the commitment and the decision to, to get out of this opportunity that you're looking at what you want to get out of it. Because at the end of the day, you're the only person that can actually seize that opportunity and, and, and do something with it. Opportunities don't come to you. You go to them. Yes. That's what I learned. Agreement. That's awesome. And that, 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 it seems like that's what sales itself, you can uh, speak better than I can, but sales itself, that's what it is about. You just get, that, get yourself yeah. out there as a first thought, instant thought, and you go for it. That's it. You know, you put blockages in the way. Yeah. You know, when, when, a, when, a, when a pitcher throws a fastball at 101 miles an hour and the batter's sitting there with, you know, with the bat, you know, they don't hit the pause button on the ball to be like, okay, now is this thing going to, should I swing at this or not? Like you have to make it, you just have yeah. to make the decision. Like, does this look decent? Cause if yes, I'm going to take a swing, you know, and you know, just way too many people want to hit the pause button. They want to think about stuff, mull it over. Like, Either you want it or you don't. So stop, yes. you know, stop mulling it over. That's not going to make anything, you know, better or worse. Again, you're the person has to take the opportunity and do something with it. So either you're going to do it or not. The opportunity doesn't even matter itself. Gotcha, man. It's all about you. And, and, th and there is also a fine line with that perspective as well, which I agree 100%. And there's also a fine line, which is if you, some people may, um, debate that there is yeah you just you just get the 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 baseball and you just hit you just hit it and you just and just go for it now if yeah. there is not um now there is some part of preparation that you can do before which you've been telling me at the beginning which i really also like the balance for you to also know okay where where is it better for me to prepare before so then i can hit it like with your employees, for example, you said that you're, and I want to go over it real quick with you on the, on the problems that you were having initially, you know, when you start having employees and what you learn from that, yeah. and what you're doing differently. Uh, do you think that there, there was, where, what, what, what's the fine line? What's the balance that you're like, Oh, I have to prepare for, for it, or it's time for me to just go for it and learn it along the way. Just, um, yeah, I, I look at I look at work, I look at sales, I look at business, um, very similar to any how any athlete would end up looking at, you know, going and playing a game, you know, like, you know, the game is going to start at seven o'clock on, on, on Sunday night, you're a football team, like, you know, you have to be there, you got to get dressed up, you got to be wearing your stuff. And you know, you're going to take the field, like, it's not like, Oh, hey, you know what, real quick, I need to watch the game film one more time. Like, everybody's going to be on the field. It's game time. And so, you know, I, I would say one of the biggest changes in my own personal life professionally, you know, is salespeople every single day is game day, dude. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sundays can be game day. Every day is game day. And so we, we don't have six days to prepare for game day. What we can do is we can make small microscopic incremental micro changes and improvements so that today I can learn what I can learn. I can prepare, you know, how I can so that tomorrow when I wake up, I can go and I can perform just a little bit better than I did today. And so, you know, that's where you hear, you know, the cliche stuff of, you know, get 1% better every day. Nobody follows that shit because it's not measurable. Nobody knows what that would actually look like. Do I need to make 1% more phone calls? You know, do I need to read 1% more paragraphs in a book? Like, what is they this whole- what it even means, right? <laughs> They have no idea. We just love the, the idea and the concept of this um, compound effect of get 1% better, but it's too esoteric, too general, and too ambiguous for people to actually, you know, execute on. So most people, <laughs> most people fail on that. Where I, I that, man, yeah. where I see what I did well is I started looking at the nighttime and I started looking at the morning because every day during game day, I'm out on the field. I have to perform. I have to make phone calls. I have to close deals. I have to send out contracts. I got to follow up with people. I got to pitch deals, so on and so forth. 
But you know, if I'm watching Netflix for four hours every single night and I'm spending the mornings hitting my snooze button until the very last minute to put on some clothes and get into the office, well, guess who's gonna suck ass at their job? Me. Just like if my quarterback on my, on my team you know, isn't practicing six days a week, isn't going through the film, isn't learning new plays and isn't practicing, they're gonna take the field, call the wrong play at the wrong time, they're gonna blow coverage, they're gonna throw interceptions and they're gonna suck. And so as salespeople, dude, most salespeople never hit their full potential and never actually succeed or even experience a little bit of success because they don't have any attention on the pre preparation that it takes in the mornings and the evenings to totally lock in your professional and your personal life for um, the ability to actually, you know, achieve goals. Yeah. yeah. I agree, man. That's, that, 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 that's awesome. I, I, I'm always, I'm always, I, I think I'm connecting with you, Mark, because I kind of have had a different uh, perspective on how you were. That's why I always wanted to talk to you. It's different when you're talking to the person, when I'm talking to you right now, then sometimes um, I learn more from you when I'm talking to you and see the person that you are. And I really appreciate that. And it's just the type of person who like gets to work. You don't put any type of philosophy in the way, you know, beautiful quotes to uh, work by those quotes. You know, there's just, it's just game on. It's game it, on. You prepare, you learn from it, but you also hit the ball. Yeah, that, that's exactly what this whole thing is. And, you know, most people drop the ball, which, you know, I'm kind of grateful for, you know, because, yeah. you know, it, it just makes my job easier, <laughs> you know, yeah. less competitive, <laughs> that's, that's less, true. less yeah. people out trying to go out and get it, man. Like, dude, what a, what a place this world would be to live in if everybody just like really went for it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, dude, can you imagine like how amazing of a world it would be if everybody just, you know, like worked hard, you know, like studied, the world would be such a different place, man, if everybody just freaking went for it full force, stopped making excuses and just like, just did it, you know, like, man, can you imagine where like Apple would actually be if every single employee in their company just from a, a singular unified approach said, dude, we're, we're maxing out all execution. I mean, you know, there'd be less potholes in the streets, you know, Domino's you would can, deliver pizzas faster. <laughs> and you can feel that on a micro level, like even for myself, I, sometimes I just want to share with people how awesome it is. Um, because I, I enjoy to own a business, to have one go and focus on growing until you've reached there and then make another one, but each day. And if people realize, just like you said, if people were to everybody, they'll live a, live a happier life. I know that for sure. And even yep. when you accomplish something that you have to do in one morning and you do that, you feel the sense of happiness. Yeah. Imagine, right? Imagine somebody doing that for an entire year. Yeah. And, and, and here's also the other thing is, you know, a lot of people do what they are kind of good at, you know, working in a factory or doing IT or, you know, maybe not the thing that they really want to do. And they like, they're kind of good at it. So like, they're all right at it. It doesn't bother them. They're pretty comfortable doing what they're doing. Most people don't understand that doing what you're kind of good at doing on repeat and not doing the thing that you actually want to do badly. Dude, I, I can go do something badly, but I can give myself, I can give that thing all of me. And even if I don't get the result that I'm looking for, I don't feel successful or I don't get that deal or you know whatever it is I'm trying to do. If I know that I tried really hard I can go to bed happy as hell, dude, knowing that I actually tried really hard and that I'm like, that work is going to pay off if I continue to do it. So, you know, again, anybody else that's listening, you're going to feel happier about your life being a failure doing the things that you actually want to do because you know, every single failure is just a little notch in the belt. It's just another rung in the ladder for you to get to where you actually want to go versus feeling unfulfilled, but getting a little bit of what you want. I'd rather get everything that I want, fail for years on my way to go get that thing, but I'll, I'll still feel fulfilled because I know I'm on my path doing things my way. And I know, dude, sooner or later, the ladder is going to stop and I'm going to be at the top. And that's yeah. just like, that's, the, that's what pushes me along and has made me a happy ass mofo my entire <laughs> life. Is, dude, I, yeah. I, I know where I'm going. And, and living life with no regrets. And by that, I mean... Um, 
if we if we set something to do in the morning that we know we got to do to grow to feel better even we we do that and we're not going to feel regrets in the afternoon but but if we don't do that certain thing that we know we have to do we're going to we're going to have regret in the afternoon it's just inevitable yeah and i think that's the that's the thing of living without regrets is when you know you're working for, you're maybe you have failed many times maybe we, we and still there's a lot of times that we're going to fail still but because we did it we know that the end result is always going to be success uh, in, in each one's own terms of success. Those are facts. Yeah. Awesome, man. Jordan, and one, one more quick thing, man. I know we have a lot of, a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> um, what is, where are you going with the company now? Like what's your, what, what's your goal and what have you learned and what are the things that you can think, if you can think of, that you're like, okay, I'm going to avoid doing this. Any, any mistakes that you committed that you're not, that, that you improved on? Um, you know, uh, mistakes that I've made in business that I will avoid doing in the future is uh, number one is, is partnerships. I think in business, it can be a very attractive proposition for somebody that you like or admire or are friends with to go into business with one another uh, uh, with the excitement and the enthusiasm of, dude, yeah, we're partnering up for a business. But business has a unique way of taking um, a magnifying glass to the sunshine of entrepreneurship and just frying the shit out of whoever's underneath that magnifying glass if expectations aren't actually set up, if policies, procedures, and processes aren't defined um, I've, I've had some very poor business partnerships, uh, in the past that didn't end very well, uh, with people that I, I actually like <laughs> based on the fact that there wasn't expectations, there wasn't certain things set up. So, you know, I've become a very transactional person and, you know, employees, uh, business partners, managers, people I'm going to be hiring and bringing into my business, you know, it's going to be extremely transactional, non-emotional. I'm not here to be friends with these people. Um, I'm here to do good business and rely on them to do their job, which is of course going to be detailed out in the expectations. And, you know, I've learned that in business and in sales, you know, whether you're a customer or you're a salesperson or a manager, a VP, an executive, a, a business owner, whatever, is the only problems you're really ever going to have with people is when expectations aren't clearly defined. Because if expectations are clearly defined, and I know that you know, when Andre shows up to my office and he knows that he has to make 150 phone calls as the effort and he knows what his quota is for the month as far as revenue, if you don't hit that, then we can sit down and we can chat about your approach or whatever. And also at the exact same point in time, if you're not, you know, doing the effort that helps contribute to the attainment of the revenue goal that we're going for and you're not really trying well, then I don't need to feel emotional about letting you go or having a talk with you or correcting you because, again, this is a transactional expectation-based relationship. It's not me just giving you an opportunity or a place to stay where I'm going to pay you a couple of bucks. This is you saying, I'm going to do my job, me saying, I'm going to pay you to do your job. And if those things don't line up, then I don't need to be emotional about it and neither, neither do you, honestly. And so, you know, one thing that I'm going to definitely avoid as I scale and grow this business is taking a lot of the emotion out of the business by making sure that expectations are really detailed. And I think that that's a really important thing for a lot of people to take home. Awesome, man. And I've, I'll be honest with you in my own business, I've, I've learned a lot also. I learned this kind of the same lesson that it changed my whole, I have um, about uh, t right now 10 or 11 employees now. Yep. And before I've always, I use, I, I would treat them in an emotional way. And after it changed that, not it has it been better for me. You know, it's yes, yes, or it's a no, it's a no, whatever. Even down to the simplest stuff. If they needed to take some time off, it's in the books. It's on the books, how many days they, you yep. know, simple stuff like that. Yeah. But before I used to kind of want to put myself in their shoes because I like to do that a lot and it has played against me put myself in their shoes thinking, okay, maybe I understand, you know, I understand them, but it doesn't work in a business. And when you're doing with quotas and following goals, yep. it doesn't work <laughs> it's yeah. huge emotionally. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, business is the most unemotional thing in the, in the world because 
I mean, business is a dollar sign, dude. You know, you either, you either have uh, blood, you know, or you're going to bleed out and you know, yeah. that's what business is. And unfortunately it doesn't run on feelings. It runs on, is there blood in my business or not? Yeah. I like that, man. That's, that's awesome. I, I, th I think of it the same way. I kind of consequently on the part of the partnership as well. I couldn't agree more with you. I've, um, I've never been in a partnership before, but I've always been advised. And I always seen before the problems, it's like a marriage. If you're getting a partnership, you really have to know yeah. who you're getting into. But even then you, you don't know how the person's going to act five years from now, you know? Right. Um, very now, true. Jordan, the last thing, man, uh, our pure curious, uh, curiosity as well. I know that you have running a personal brand as well, which is super awesome. Um, what do you do plan on growing that uh, together with your, with your sales business or do you plan on growing more of your employee base there in Wisconsin or going all over the world? Um, you know, the, the personality brand for me is, is really just the, the hub for, for people to uh, either transact with me, work with me, or, you know, just mm -hmm. use my story or the things that I've been through for inspiration to, you know, do whatever they do at the end of the day. Um, you know, I, I know that I can't reach all of my goals alone. I know that I can be very successful completely all by myself, solopreneur or whatever. Obviously that's not in alignment with my goals. So I'm not going to be a solopreneur. I'll have a company. I'll have, you know, a large team one of these days as I build and scale. Um, you know, but you know, the, the way that I use the personality brand is, is multifaceted and, um, has paid me paid me some dividends, uh, building it correctly and being vigilant, um, and also being very transparent. Awesome, man. And I see that on you. This moment we got on the phone, that transparency that you have, that's awesome, man. Really, really admirable. Um, Jordan, thank you. Thank you so much for your time, man, for giving me, I know it's, it's, uh, it's middle afternoon right now and you got to get to work as well. <laughs> that's right. Back to work. Yeah, and I I will we stay connected, man, on Instagram. Um, for anybody in the audience who wants to follow Jordan Stupar, it's at Jordan Stupar. Is that right? At Jordan Stupar. That's Instagram. That's Facebook. That's YouTube. That's you know, just Google me. <laughs> you'll, yeah, you'll find you'll find yeah. some information somewhere. Awesome, and thank you, thank you again for your time, Jordan. Appreciate it, man. Awesome, man. Appreciate you. Yeah.